why does fukri one to why does it make for a great watch why why does it happen that you know people tell me jab bhi tv pe aati hai hum dekhte hain honestly i don't think there are there are a lot <laughs> i'll be the smartest person on this set. I mean, I, I, I'm surprised you think I'm private. I have to share everything. Uh, also, congratulations a year. I was just reminded that it's been a year to your marriage. Uh, अब ये last है पक्का. Dance भी मैं कर लेती हूँ, but मैं I do it on my turn. Hi, this is Bhavna, and you're watching India Today. Today I'm joined by one of the most versatile actors, Richa Chadda, right here, who is basking in the glory of Fukrithi success. Firstly, a huge welcome to you. Thanks, Bhavna. You know, while I was I was thinking of a good introduction for you, and I thought that okay, uh, Fukri three maybe comedy, but then I was like, I can't bracket her into just comedy because she has done intense roles, dramatic roles, and like played really interesting characters. I was just like, oh my god! Mm-hmm. I mean, if you start looking at your filmography, you have done versatile roles time and again, and that not a lot of actors can boast that about. You know, so uh, firstly, I'll start with that. Mm-hmm. What has been the driving force? Because दस साल में इतनी वराइटी करना not everyone can do it, and I know it comes with its challenges. Yeah. How have you been able to maintain that and still be a working actor? Because I know so many people have tried, and then I just feel uh, I feel lucky that I got all these interesting roles to play, whether it's Gangs of Wasipur or Masan or Fukre or. Inside Edge or anything, you know. I just feel lucky that these roles were written, and I got a chance to either audition for them or, for some reason, I was selected to do them. I worked hard on everything that I've put out, um, and yeah, I enjoy doing different things because I think one of the best things about being an actor is that you can live so many lives without the baggage. So I really enjoy this work. So I try to keep as much variety in it so that I only don't get bored. After so many years in the industry, Richa, क्या अब ये box office जो numbers होते हैं इस इससे आप कितना प्रभावित होती हैं Is दे do they have any effect on how you are going to choose your next film? Or it doesn't get like immune. चल गई तो बहुत अच्छी बात है नहीं भी चली तो you know that you have done your part and you have done justice to your part. Well, the thing is, फुकरे uh, um See, Fukre is a film that will rely on box office. Yeah, it may not be a film that the reviewers will instantly like or love. Uh, and in this case, we were very fortunate that we got positive reviews as well. Mm-hmm. But you know what I mean in terms of critical acclaim. Yes. This uh, this film is different from that. So for this film, the biggest testament of success is, of course, the reviews. Oh. Uh, uh, is of the course a box, box office. office. Yes. So in this case, I think the box office is a is the evidence the proof is in the pudding people can't keep supporting a film if they don't enjoy it so this is an entertaining enjoyable film that people can watch with the whole family hasi mazak laughter giggles lots of humor friendship that's what it's about i think at the and it always preaches something nice like kindness or sharing or yeah. believing your gut instinct So for that reason, I think it continues to work, and it works at the box office also for the same reason. And box office is important. If Gangs of Wasipur was not, it was critically acclaimed, and it was a commercial success. That's why I have a career, you know. Yeah, yeah. So box office is important. But there's lots of films today. Now the landscape has changed. If a film gets amazing reviews and it goes great directly to the platforms, then also. actors benefit from it because it didn't have a theatrical release doesn't stop it from being loved by people no i mean today of course the scenario is different but but again like the numbers can be sometimes daunting because you believe in a project for for example i think it's kind of like i just know that you would still go ahead with it but i want to know how much of an impact does it have on your next like on your next project because at the end of the day or oh, it is always said that an actor is as good as their last box office mm-hmm. or their last friday how many times have you heard that and has it ever affected you i don't think it's true any more because um, <laughs> of late nothing was working and now everything is working at the box office that doesn't mean those actors are irrelevant na mm-hmm. if someone has a it's like a sport if a cricketer is not in form they may get dropped from the team but if their form comes back they'll be back on it so the value of people is far more than numbers and you have to look at people in the long term what is their trajectory what is their filmography 
what have they what kind of stories do they want to tell then then you can like take a holistic picture and determine how their career will go so what does it take in today's time to get richa to sign <coughs> sign a project or a film like are there some tick marks that you do no but there are red flags so <laughs> then <laughs> which are like if i feel like the person sitting opposite me is not smarter than me i won't do it hmm. it they have to be smarter than me they have to be more committed than me and more protective of their idea of their script mm. than me mm. uh, even as a producer i will not look at things where i feel like the person only i'll have to drive them and push them to do better mm. and they won't work hard because it happens sometimes people just make projects jaldi jaldi mein mm. to make a quick buck or whatever you know so that is a red flag for me when i see that the intent is different on both sides that is a red flag for me then i won't touch that wow that's actually in- interesting because i i completely agree there are times when you come across people who are not as committed as you are just committed i mean i've got offered a script recently which some boy had written he was under 30 and he wrote a very very this thing script about uh, madhuhud so i asked him what is like do you have a female co-writer do you have a director do you have like you know what are you going to do so like, yeah we'll look at a female director but uh, i think i know women i said what is your research in this he's like oh actually i have a mother <laughs> yeah so when i sense that i'll be the smartest person on this set i'll have to whip everyone and get them to do their their own jobs yeah. it's not my scene i just said no and rightly so i completely agree i mean you can't how am i going to grow if the person sitting opposite me is relying on my brains mm-hmm. and my intelligence my character my credibility my talent to do something yeah. it has to work both ways no 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 completely but again um, also tell me something like in this time and age when digital and social media is so much like prominent in promotions and everything that if, uh, that an actor does i think you've still been able to balance and maintain that thing that my private life is extremely private and my uh, professional is professional <laughs> how do you look at this entire phenomena and how are you been able to stay away from it I mean, I, I, I'm surprised you think I'm private. I have to share everything. No, I, 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 I think you're private in where you have to be. Like, there's no unnecessary sort of, uh, you know. Yeah, uh, I'm not going to make use of my husband because he's good looking and popular, and uh-huh. you know, I can monetize his charm. So <laughs> that's not going to happen. But I, really, yeah, I mean, you know, we both are a little bit private. We both feel a little bit awkward to, yeah. um, you know, be very, very out there in that sense that. There's a constant complaint from our publicists also. <laughs> so we, I mean, we are just those people. But kabi, I'm I'm sure people around you or the marketing teams or they must have advised you that maybe Richa this time maybe thoda aur zada post kar denge ya ye kar denge ya ye reel bana denge. Nee, How do you? Post to kar rahe hain. Nee, like reel bana lenge ya kuch dance kar lenge. Haan, How do you? Reel bana lenge, dance bhi main kar leti hu, but main, I do it on my terms. I'm not going to dance to one rubbish kacha badam song because the whole world is doing it and then there's no sense na yeah. everyone's doing the same step and I don't know <laughs> I just I'm just like they did it why are you doing it the same way yeah, yeah. I know it's a trend either you put your own spin on it you do something fun like you know I also do a few transition reels I did a few trending audios but I do it because I enjoy them yeah. not because uh, <coughs> you know, again like uh i think you spoke about the trend uh, the culture thing recently where people are trying to be woke only because social media sort of demands it in ways because everyone wants to uh the market demands it, the market demands it. let the me correct it, then brands are like oh 20% of all our consumers are lgbtq let's be inclusive mm-hmm. so it it's a dictate of the market and the market demands something and people try to put it in their policy and try to be inclusive and whatever It's very different now. All the big brands, even Victoria's Secrets and all, are having uh, plus size models. Why? Because again, there is a market. There is a demand for those clothes. So when the market demands something, they are not terribly well intentioned big brands. They will go with that because it is. The money talk. It's the money. It's in vogue. They want to be a part of cool conversations. They want to be seen as good people. 
that's what happens so i just i find it very <laughs> boring for all the people now suddenly wanting to be inclusive and like harmonious and all it's a joke the internet doesn't forget <laughs> lekin i i also want to know if say uh because it's interesting yeah. say a director or a writer comes to you uh you perhaps don't align with their thoughts as a person because that could also happen mm-hmm. but the script is great yeah. then how do you decide i work with people who i don't agree with i think you must work with people who you don't agree with i if you ask me today will i work with the completely insane person or very rabid hate monger i wouldn't but uh, that like you are entitled to your opinion your favorite color can be blue my favorite color can be red and we can both coexist the whole point of a dialogue is to have enrichment to have ideas that go beyond this that's what it is no so yeah that's how i see it again i want to ask you do you see a shift within the industry for example like you said today because the market is demanding a certain kind for example uh, like you mentioned inclusivity uh, there's also this thing that acha chalo now will make more films about women uh, that it's it's in vogue and sometimes most people are doing it only because it's in vogue uh, when all of the, but you have also uh, in a correct me if i'm wrong here in 2016 you had opened up about the fact that somehow the entire uh, uh entire culture of how you want to fit in to a certain shape or something it got to you at a point where you had an eating disorder do you think we have moved finally there's a genuine uh, sort of concern over this and we have moved away from that vanity uh because you moved away from it early on but within the industry do you see that I don't know if that's true and I don't know if most people practice what they preach and I would say the same for all the people even on the social media when I see some 20 something talking about body positivity wanting to be accepted with their cellulite and their scars but I meet them in person and they look terribly insecure or conscious you know that it's very deep seated and they are working on it maybe that's why they're sharing it but have they achieved that state of mind i'm not so sure so i think it's a i think it's a process first of all and i think that people really have to deep dive within themselves to come up with why they are doing what they're doing but within the industry do you see a change in that sense where vanity is no more considered as what or a certain body type is no more considered ideal no i think there's definitely more than one uh, body type and uh, actually bollywood actresses have always been known to be curvy and yeah. like and fleshy exactly so i that problem was never with bollywood actually i think it was a lot with the fashion yeah. fashion press yeah. and actresses get shamed and get scrutinized but so do men like they also you know they have a pressure to have always been this shape with this muscle and they have to deal with like maybe steroids and stuff so anyone in front of the camera i think has a pretty hard time yeah true uh, but you have always dealt with things very in a very unique manner i i just feel we can just call it the richa chadda way because you've always uh set the path for things to come again with your production i remember last time you had spoken that you want to enrich and give opportunities to different people newer talents who perhaps are deprived of that opportunity and you want to pave that way you and ali both um what kind of scripts are you looking for per se when it comes to production and how many projects are already in line because i know there are quite a few things are in different stages of development of course we have our own documentary that we are going to release soon Uh, I think the teaser will be out on this Monday, which is the ninth. Yeah, um, and uh, yeah, we want to tell more heartwarming, slice of life things. But I'm very clear that I want to do commercially viable stuff so that I can continue to make True. more things. Commercially viable doesn't mean that they have to be big budget commercial enterprises mm-hmm. with huge stars. I I just mean that we'll do justice to the stories, or we'll at least try. No, it's not about that. Also, वो तो हो जाता है. But why? You have to have, uh, you have to get something out of the project. Like you have to get either prestige, or you have to get, uh, like, your return on investment has to be sharp and high, or you have to know that I'm making this one film. By the time I work on the trilogy, it will be a success. ऐसा. Correct. Hmm. No, no, 
that's actually uh, you have a business mind. There's a reason why you are a producer at this point. I mean, and I'm <laughs> because I'm a very disgruntled artist because I want more creative control over the stuff that I do. खुद के हाथ में वो कंट्रोल ले लो तो दैट्स that's the best thing ever i feel yeah. you know because then you don't have to there's no uh, room for uh, any argument or anything because you know that you have the control no we argue a lot ali and i disagree on most things creatively <laughs> but uh, also congratulations a year i was just reminded that it's been a year to your marriage and oh. and um, i remember recently i was watching one of the interviews of ali where he mentioned that आप ही का एक्चुअली कोर्ट पे ही रिएक्टेड वेर इन यू मैंशन दैट बोथ ऑफ यू लव ईच अदर्स वर्क सो मच एंड दैट इज़ वन ऑफ द प्राइम रीजन्स बाई यू सॉट ऑफ यू नो गॉड अट्रैक्टेड टू थिंक वी वुड हैव बिन अट्रैक्टेड टू ईच अदर वी डेंट रिस्पेक्ट ईच अदर एज आर्टिस्ट इफ यू डेंट हैव रिस्पेक्ट फॉर ईच अदर एज टैलेंट देन मे बी इट वुड बी डिफिकल्ट और डिफरेंट बट आई थिंक दैट दैट्स वॉट ट्रिगर्ड आर रोमांस ऑल्सो I like the word triggered a uh, romance, but you know, um, as artists and as uh, as partners, um, what is that one thing uh, that he has influenced, perhaps in the way you look at scripts or you look at your work in general? Because that also comes with time. Over the years, you you sort of evolve, and some things which perhaps bothered you at a certain point, you you kind of like you know change perspective. How has that? Has he been a positive influence in that sense? Yeah, he's been a positive influence in more senses than one. Obviously, that's why we are married. Otherwise, you know. Uh, of course. Yeah. Uh, but uh, th- he, I think, he brings a sense of calm, a sense of humor to most things around him, and he's actually a very simple guy. He likes very simple things. He wants to eat. He wants uh, to sleep on time. He wants to watch one movie in the hall per yeah. week. so not hard to please at all but more than that i've uh, what i've what i like about him is that he never uh, he's never negative about anyone else he never says anything bad about anyone he never gossips mm. and he would actually walk away from a room if other people are gossiping so that is very admirable quality especially in our business i think because uh, correct me if i'm wrong but i feel you are similar i've never seen you indulge in anything else but apart from your work पर हमारे घर पे अगर कोई आता है और कुछ बकबक करता है इधर उधर या बिचिंग करता है तो वो अली चला जाता है उठ के हाँ इल बी लाइक आई जस्ट बी बैक इल गो टू द बाथरूम और समथिंग सो आई एम सेइंग इट्स अ वेरी इट्स वेरी रियली मच्योर एंड काइंड आई मीन अली great job i mean i that's a great thing uh, also now i cannot leave you before asking about your upcoming projects yeah. hira mandi being one of those which i am really looking forward to because that one poster that come out where oh my god when i looked at that entire gang i was like wow yeah. also you looked so amazing and being a bansali i mean you've already worked with him before but this is more so like a uh, more featureish in ways I right no i mean that was obviously a, a supporting part uh, in ram leela but i really enjoyed that part also i thought she had personality yeah. she was triggering things she was making things happen in the script it was always her that was you know making ram and leela meet or yeah, you know yeah. going into the enemy's territory to try and get a message out so she was very catalytic to the film uh, but this one i love my track and i love the character i'm playing uh, and i think a lot of people will be surprised i am already looking forward to it. do we do you know when it's going to come out by any chance no idea no it's not that it's just that the canvas is so huge yeah. and it is in the past it is in the 1940s and so we have to do you know there sometimes when you have to create some things even on vfx so it will be a collective call between mr bansali and netflix and i'm sure they wanted to be out sooner than later as I'm well sure yeah. we are all i think all of us i can say for the audiences as well we are all really looking forward to it because mm-hmm. um, i mean the first look was amazing and this entire uh, ensemble looks really promising yeah. um that also i mean before i wrap i uh, generally the last one <laughs> um i feel that you are one of the most secure actors in the industry because you've always worked in an ensemble when needed mm-hmm. uh, with multiple heroines as well which is again not many people at least when you did it back then not many people would have done it yeah. um where does that sense of security come from and have you ever dealt with people who have been insecure because i think you learn from from that and you know that you will never do that to anyone else 
No, I just uh, I worked with a very insecure actress recently. She tried to change the script and like block out my light and things like that, and became very evident to everyone. Um, so I did ask the DOP to step in and be like, okay. "Can you ask them not to block my light?" That's very obvious and very tacky and '90s, uh, and they did that. Uh, but for me, that person is blacklisted. I may never work with them again, even as a producer. I don't want to hire people who are because I come from theater. In theater, everyone's important. We are all a team, and filmmaking is no different. In filmmaking, the person who's holding the light, the person who's mopping the floor, the person you're trying to yell at and show down, everyone is equally important. So for me, that kind of democracy is very important between actors. between technicians everyone has to be respectful and i do not like shouting screaming abusing on set because it just ruins the mood and uh, you know draws you out of your creative process so uh ab ye last step pakka fukre 3 to ab chalo acha kar hi rahi hai theater mein humne bola hi tha aapko yaad hoga ab fukre 4 ka kya scene hai i'm sure it was going to happen i mean so i hope so i think wo excel and rig they will decide I hope so. I really hope so. I think the people really like uh, the Fukre enterprise. Lovely. On that note, thank you so much, Richa. I feel please keep doing what you're doing because I always enjoy what you're doing. आप आपने आप जो mention कर रही थी ना कि बीच में कुछ ऐसी फिल्में भी की है but उसके बाद आपने कभी नहीं की है trust me. In the last few years, it's only been an upward journey and a great journey. So. I think so. Yeah, it's conscious because I, there's no point working on a bad film. Thank you so much and all the very best. Thank you.